It's the end of the year, and like any narcissist content creator out there, I decided to hold a Q&A and take questions from both YouTube and Twitter. We're four months into the channel's lifespan, and honestly, I'm really blown away by how much growth we've had in such a short amount of time, and I'm sure anybody who's new to the channel has a lot of burning questions for your boy, or maybe a handful, so uh, let's not waste any time and dive into it. Or Creed asks, do you play any other games? If you do, which ones? Honestly, I'm just a nerd for most RPGs. Xenoblade Chronicles is my number one favorite game of all time, but I love the entire series Xenoblade X, Xenoblade 2, and oh my god, especially Torn of the Golden Country, Xenoblade 2's DLC. All of them, literally masterpieces. I love FromSoft games. Sekiro is definitely my favorite game from them, and I'm really excited for Elden Ring, but I love Bloodborne, Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3. I still have to play Demon Souls. I've been putting it off. I don't know what my deal is. I really do want to play it, and I have it. I own a PS5, so that's really high up on my list. Uh, I love Final Fantasies, and I just played through 10 and platted it uh, earlier around Thanksgiving. Loved it to pieces. And I also play a lot of Smash. I have a Switch, love it to pieces. Pretty big Nintendo guy, but probably sunk the most amount of time on my Switch with Smash. I might be the uh, best King Dedede main, by the way, and I also play a pretty mean Pyromithra, so come at me, bros. Come at me. Pandora Key asks, I don't know if you've mentioned this before, but what made you start content creating? So I've worked professionally in radio for about five years, and I've done a lot of freelance voiceover work and video and audio editing for different YouTube channels, so I've definitely been exposed to the YouTube and the Twitch scene for a pretty long time now. Along the way, I've also picked up some things on graphic design, animation, art, even music production. I've truly become this jack of few trades, master of absolutely none, but a lot of different skills that can apply to like the online content creation scene. Basically, one day I was hanging out with a group of friends who all play on the European server while my main account is in North America, and I really wanted to show them my cool teapot build, but I couldn't, you know, bring them into the pot, so I recorded it, I did narration for it, and I decided, wait, <laughs> I could just make a channel out of this. You know, at the time, that entire group of friends hadn't even really touched the teapot, and I was like, man, if I make guides and different videos that give people different ideas and inspirations for their own builds, maybe I can rope my friends into it, and then maybe I can just, like, by extension, rope other people into the teapot and into this aspect of Genshin that I think has gone really underappreciated. Maybe along the way, we sprinkle in some other non-teapot-related videos, just so I don't go insane and stir crazy by making only one type of video. And here we are. Oh, hey boys, let's be real. I'm only in it for the money. Oh, I just want to get that Genshin. Oh, Genshin 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 bills, baby. Rats27 asks, do you intend to make more videos? Um, no, man. No. Alexander Ariel Escobar asks, who is your favorite Genshin character and why? Bonus, what other video games do you usually play? All right, so first question is, it's so hard to pick one, man. It's so impossible. It's like favorite child syndrome, right? Zhang Li has always been one of my absolute favorite all-rounders because I love him for his design. I love him for his gameplay. I love him for his team utility. I love him for his story. I love him for his character quests. I love him for everything. His voice, come on. He's just, oh, he's beautiful start to finish. Of course, fucking love child. Honestly, for all the exact same reasons, he just, it's weird. Like, I feel like personality wise, I really don't share that much in common with him. Like I'm very non-confrontational, kind of a pussy. <laughs> But I don't know, he's just, he's so suave and handsome and, and roguish and charming, and I just want him to fucking ream my anus apart. <clears throat> Recently, Yoi Mia has just completely went over my heart. She is my Genshin wife. I love everything about her. I love her bubbly personality. love her relationship with her dad. I love her gameplay. It's so much fun doing the Gatling gun build, man. Everything about Yoi Mia. Beautiful. So those are my three for sure. And then, ugh, but the Kazuma is so good. And then, ah, oh, what the, dude, it's so hard. It's so hard. I'm gonna, uh, what does my heart say? What does my heart say? Oh God, oh God. Mm. Child. I'm gonna have to say if I had to actually pick one child, but it's basically a four-way split between Kazuha, Child, Zhongli, and Yoi Mia. What other video games do I play? Uh, I did already answer that, so I think we're gonna move on. You know what I'll do then? Here's my top 25 favorite games of all time. Hopefully this gives like a pretty solid idea of what kind of games I gravitate towards and what my general tastes are. ADHD Weirdo asks, what inspires you to work in the teapot? And what's your favorite area you've made? Defined by if you were to press build inside or outside your house, the area you are given. So <laughs> what inspires me is boredom. I literally, I mean, you've noticed it on the channel too. I only start doing teapot things. I only start making teapot videos when I don't have anything else in the game to do. So I got to hustle and I got to start making those other teapot guides and stuff before 2.4 comes out. Because, oh my God, that looks amazing. You kidding me? Ekonomia? It's fucking incredible. So, uh, yeah, no, literally it's just, 
<laughs> like I said in the Teapot Challenge video, okay, every live service game is best defined by its transmogs and its housing systems, aka it's like, you know, it's a set of systems that you, you revert back to when you don't have anything else to do in Hunt 4. But it's really fun. Like, I've always really enjoyed housing systems and games in general. Like, one of my favorite games of all time is the Dark Cloud series on PS2. They basically combine, like, town sim and town decorating with randomized dungeon crawling. It's a really crazy combo, and it works surprisingly well. Dark Cloud 2 especially. The housing system in that kind of has some similarities to Genshin's, where you have to, like, craft all of your own components and houses and stuff. You can, like, put companions down inside. And because that was one of the games I grew up with, I feel like it just kind of formed this innate love of decorating, if that makes sense. I just like decorating. I'm just a nerd for it, you know? Eventually, one of my big goals is making my own game. I really want to make my own action RPG, and uh, I think I want to place a huge emphasis on exploration and world design, uh, level design, and uh, I think having a good foundation of what it takes to, like, decorate an area and make it look really nice and appealing can go a, lo a long way. I'm not saying that me playing Genshin Teapot is the training that I need in order to build a video game, but I do think a seed of that skill translates between the two, and, uh, and I really enjoy it. I have a lot of fun with it. What's my favorite area I've made? I don't know if this is recency bias speaking, but I actually really, really like the Hilly Troll obstacle course, uh, mostly because I really didn't go into it expecting to make anything that would look like remotely cool, but I feel like I found a, a couple like really neat ideas, like especially using the windmill as an obstacle. I, I thought it was really cool, not to toot my own heart too much. So uh, yeah, I think it turned out really nice. All right, now Sora has posted four different questions and honestly, they're all really good ones, but just for the sake of brevity for this video, I'm only gonna answer one and then Sora, if you're watching this, I'm gonna respond to the other three in the comment section of that community post because I'm lazy and this means less editing for me. <laughs> hey. How long does it normally take for me to plan out my designs? They seem so complicated to design and it would take me hours to come up with. Well, <laughs> here's the real secret. I never plan them out. I never go with the game plan and I kind of like it that way. I honestly, I feel like my builds are not as good as some of the other Genshin tubers out there like Real B, Unlucky Tababito, Pink Peas are all fucking incredible teapot builders and I think they make way more compelling and way better builds than I do and I think a part of that is because they actually like plan their stuff out and they probably do multiple iterations of the design before they settle on what they want to make. I, I don't. <laughs> I can't be bothered. I'm a lazy fucking bum, dude. So, so there you have it. Next up asks, do you plan to make something other than Teapot content? I love them, but I'd like to see what you think of other aspects of the game or perhaps even other games. That's a really good question. The Teapot is very niche content, right? It's definitely not like the highest performing Genshin content on YouTube, but it has the benefit of there not being very many channels dedicated to it. And even fewer Teapot channels that have voiceover and stuff, because most of the other Teapot Andes just do it all like via text. And they still have a lot of personality and I love them to pieces. But I figure having a more personality driven Teapot channel is nice because I can cast out my niche Teapot guide videos and still do like decently on views and stuff, right? Get like several thousand. Hopefully sell people on the personality and then drive them to the other non teapot related content which I've gotten a lot of comments of people saying hey came here for the teapot guide stayed for that juicy little gobbiers so yeah, I mean, right now, the split between Teapot and non-Teapot content is pretty close to 50-50. I think with this video included, we're at seven Teapot videos and six non-Teapot videos, and I want that split to stay pretty consistent throughout the, the channel's lifespan. I'd like there to be a, like a pretty clean half and half split between uh, Teapot and non-Teapot content. Now, obviously that might be subject to change, right? I think eventually I'm gonna run out of things to make guides for for the Teapot, and there probably will eventually be a shift to just a lot more non-Teapot content, but at least for the next Let's call it half a year. I'm probably going to keep doing the half and half teapot, non-teapot content. And don't you fret, I already have a lot of pretty juicy non-teapot topics lined up, uh, hopefully coming out right after this video comes out. It should also be worth mentioning that I'm a degenerate VTuber fan. I love those boys to have paces. Fox Akuma. Mm, mama. Mwah. Everybody in Hollow Live. Yeah. Mwah. Whatever this silly little creature is. I'm just the wild hogs that loose into the world in search of vibes to fuck. Hell yeah. Mwah. 
The other part of the reason why I wanted to make the channel was potentially to get into VTubing, and I guess live streaming by extension. Thing is, it's not really in the books for now, at least in the short term. It just takes a lot of money to get that off the ground, like a ton of money to commission an artist for a design, which maybe I could come up with myself, but even though I'm like okay at art, I'm not amazing at it. And I definitely want the highest quality that I could get, because you know, it's something that I'm gonna have to use for a while. So that's a long term thing. For the time being, I'm content with just focusing on YouTube videos, and anything else that comes afterwards is just gonna be icing on the cake. Maybe we can make a sub goal out of it. Maybe we make live streaming like a 10k sub goal. Mm. No, 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 I gotta save the face reveal. Live stream a 10k, face reveal 100k. <clears throat> Clock reveal for a milli. Elifa asks, are there any characters you're looking forward to or a type of character you'd be looking forward to having on your team? Dude, I'm so excited for Shenha and, and Eugene. They look so cool, man. Especially, man, Adeptus Girl gonna be a perfect fit for my Ayaka team, okay? Like, big cryo buffer, plus, you know, maybe uh, if I do get around to doing my Eula, getting her built up, I think she'll be a perfect fit for both of them. Plus, she just looks amazing design-wise, and like, dude, her attack animations, that one attack where she kind of like sweeps around in a half-circle motion. God, she looks so cool. Hell yeah, I'm so excited for her. Yunjin too, I think she's going to be a perfect fit for my Yoimiya Gatling gun build. I can probably just replace Benny with her, get a pretty like similar amount of attack boost, I would imagine because it's like everybody has a different element on that team with Yoimiya, Yunjin, Fischl, Sting Cho, sorry, I had a burp. And then I don't have to worry about standing in Benny's little area of effect, plus I can free up Benny to put him on another team for like Abyss or whatever. It's gonna be such a perfect fit, I'm so hyped for them. But in terms of a character that we don't have yet, dude, I don't know if a new weapon type would be part of this question or not, but I would give my life and soul for us to have a fist weapon. I want somebody's normal attack combo to be like this crazy, high-strung seven hit, like boxing, kickboxing combo. I think that'd be so much fun, or I don't know, maybe like a whip or a, a chain and sickle type character. I think those would all be really sick, especially like chain and sickle or whip. It would kind of like bridge the gap between us having only one range weapon with bow and then all these melee weapons, right? Sort of like a medium distance weapon I think would be really cool. So I would love to see a character that played like that. Ooh, ooh, okay. So something else that'd be really cool. I'm a huge Monster Hunter fan and I love especially in the games where you get the aerial style where your guy can do a somersault and then launch off the monsters and do a whole bunch of aerial combos based off of that launch. I think having a character in Genshin where you do the similar thing where you get to really interact with the enemies and basically have an actually hard coded in Dragon Strike, but it's actually part of their kit and you get different moves depending on like maybe if you use an aerial skill or an aerial burst. I think that'd be so cool too. I'd love to see more aerial stuff because that's, man, I love Xiao. I love Kazuha. I love how they can string their aerial skill stuff together with like all the rest of their kit. And I think we had more characters that utilized air attacks, gave us even more options for juggling and doing that kind of thing. And also Loki, I feel like Baiju is gonna be sick. I don't know what it is about him that just screams like this man is gonna fucking redefine the meta, but I'm calling it here, okay? Quote this video like eight months from now. Baiju is gonna change the game fundamentally for the better. Honeybee's Love asks, not sure if you've said this before, but do you have a favorite Genshin patch? And then a follow-up question, favorite in-game event so far or one you hope to see? Well, to answer the first question, favorite Genshin patch, oh, it's a toss-up. I think mm, 1.6 with the archipelago, that was right when I came back to Genshin, so like, I'm kind of biased to it, right? It's like back when I kind of fell back in love with Genshin. I think the archipelago was such an amazing area. The music was incredible. Some of my favorite world quests. I love the design. Like, dude, the upside down island or like the organ pipes island were so cool. I love those areas. Getting that little teaser for Alice was really nice. I liked that a lot. And all the gameplay was just a blast. Plus, we got Kazwa and all that. So I really enjoyed 1.6. 1.1 still has my favorite, like, missable story moment to date with Scaramouche and his whole nonsense. Plus, oh my god, dude, the ending with Bernard, is that his name? Leonard? Oh uh, god, uh, mountain guy, hang glider guy. To date, I always liked that song that plays in Mondstadt that also plays during his animation. But now, ever since finishing that event, man, I hear that song and I start crying. It is a beast without weakness. The merciless face of the world, it fills me with fear. And when an adventurer loses courage, they can no longer climb mountains. It's like, I have this Pavlovian response to this song because it's such a fucking beautiful animation. Maybe one of my favorite like 2D animations in the game so far, and it's for this dude that 
doesn't even really have that much story significance outside of making the hang glider. I, oh, 1.1 was great. 1.6 was great. And I'm looking forward to 2.4. I think 2.4 is going to rise up to the best of the best. And I don't want to get my hopes up too high. Okay. I don't want to, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to steal my expectations. Oh, but, oh, it looks so good. Ah, it looks so good. Anyway, I guess that was for the patch. Okay, so favorite in-game event so far. Oh man, I really like the Vagabound events, the ones where you get to do the, the souped up boss fights. I just, I, they're so fun. I think they are like, without a doubt, the hardest content in the game. And you know, as, as the Dark Souls fan, right? I really, really enjoy getting fucking pushed on my limits and wanting to slam my keyboard down. I love that kind of shit, man. I'm actually so hyped that we replaced the regular vanilla Magu Kenki with his Vagabound version. Cause I think that version is just so much more fun to fight, but we all know the one true king of events. Motherfucking Leibin in the house! Uh, yeah. Yo, that's my boy! Oh, that's my boy! Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm doing so unspeakable handsome. things with that pompadour in my body. <laughs> Wilhelm Draconis asks, describe your ideal Genshin event. Like what characters involved, the story, gameplay ideas, rewards, etc. Oh god, I'm gonna have to do some pondering, brother. I gotta do some thinking. <laughs> For sure, it would be something that involves a lot of gameplay, like something that can be easily replayed and is enjoyable and combat focused. I think roguelite elements in general for Genshin fit like such a beautiful glove. <laughs> if we get like a roguelite like event in like every single patch, man, I would be a happy cucumber. I like the dungeon events. Anything that doesn't involve us doing the goddamn fast food delivery event is fucking choice to me. What characters involved? I mean, I kind of got my wish in a way. Like, I just, I, I really wanted more events with Child. And we got one that married the really cool gameplay event too. So like that, that kind of got fulfilled in a way. So I guess maybe an event with Yoi Mia. Oh no, you know what I would actually like to see? I would actually love to see Raiden and Kazuha in an event together where they get to actually finally like get closure on all that shit that went down, you know? I want Kazuma to confront her. I want I want A to actually, for once in this story, to be held responsible for her complete and utter lack of authority and neglect on Inazuma. Like, she fucked up so badly, and like, it's glossed over, and we just go on a day in her inside, and I'm, oh, it makes me mad. Gets me roiling and broiling, okay? I want Kazuha and A to be in an event together with a randomized dungeon element like we had with uh, Shiki Taisho's nonsense. And then I want the dungeon to be a permanent addition to this game. I want there to be endgame content that isn't just Abyss. Because, look, I like Abyss. I love Abyss, even. I'll say it. I love Abyss, but God, Jesus Christ, man. Why? Why do we only have one game mode that's like a permanent reoccurring game mode. We've had like eight different iterations that are all amazing and great and fun and universally loved by the community. Why do they go away, Genshin? Just make them permanent, Genshin. Anyway, last but not least, Leorian2 asks, how do you get inspiration for what to build and what makes you not give up halfway? I think it's nice to kind of internalize like a theme or like an area that you kind of want to encapsulate but then put it like your own spin on. Hey, very recently, what gives you inspiration for what to build? Just made a whole system to give you hopefully some inspiration for unique theme and motif ideas that you maybe wouldn't have thought of before. Maybe give it a whirl if you can't find inspiration. Hey, link in the description. Uh, what what makes me not give up halfway? For me, I don't really struggle that much with like finishing a build because it really doesn't take too much time, especially because, you know, subregions are pretty small and load limit is even smaller. <laughs> you know, there's not like a ton you can do. So I feel like most teapot builds are usually done in like a couple hours. And because I just enjoy the process so much, you know, I don't I don't really like get too distracted from it and uh, and not finish stuff. And I think with that, that is the end of the Q&A. So to everybody who submitted questions, thank you so much. It's been a really fun four months so far. I've really loved getting to meet so many of you Genshin Andes, and hopefully, as we continue on to 2022, more videos, more content, and more boys keep rolling on in. If you made it this far, liking the video and even subscribing to the channel does a lot to help me out. And as always, I'll see you for whatever the next video may or may not be. Bye bye.